so my 4790k has been deleted for almost a year now and I just decided that I want to try to get 4.9 gigahertz on it which requ required for 1.45 volts on it and I decided to try it on my new test bench you know my new test bench is now using my 4790k which has been deleted with the liquid ultra uh, liquid metal thermal interface material and when I tried 1.45 volts it hit over 80 degrees just in the low 80s but it's still over 80 degrees on one of the cores while the rest of the cores are basically almost 10 degrees cooler at the lower 70s so I thought that maybe my uh, D-Lit and Liquid Ultra is starting to degrade a little bit so I decided to break it open and I thought that while I was doing that I should probably also show you guys to show you if you actually need to uh, re replace your thermal interface material even if it's already re d and also using liquid metal in this case the Liquid Ultra from Cool Laboratory uh, so I decided to take it back apart and I'll be showing you guys if it's worth it to replace it with conductor knot after almost a year and to show you if there's any kind of difference so I started by taking off the cooler naturally then I took it off to the socket and since I didn't you know reseal it I could just pop the IHS off of the CPU and this is what you see under it so you can see that my liquid ultra application job isn't the prettiest or it isn't even the neatest because as you can see, I kind of spilled over to the side a little bit on the IHS at least. But at least on the one I spilled over, it's actually on the other side of the resistors. Although I also did coat the resistors and capacitors on the left side with some, you know, nail polish thing that I borrowed. But yeah, uh, looks like I didn't do a very good job the first time. And it looked to me like there are some bare spots on it. So I think that it might be causing my temp difference issue but I couldn't really remember because I didn't really remember what was the temp spread when I first just deleted it I just decided to take a look at the temps recently but yeah anyways I decided to clean it off so I just decided to use some paper towels from the kitchen and just kind of scrape it off first uh, kind of take it off since it doesn't get absorbed you have to kind of you know take it off using your tissue and once I finished scr scrubbing it a few times and also use some you know arctic clean from arctic to clean thermal paste but this time to clean uh, the liquid ultra it kind of worked pretty well but as far as i can tell that there's still some kind of stuck on the ihs it's kind of bonded onto it and the cpu dye itself the silicon itself isn't as you know shiny as it was before when it was new they had some kind of scuff marks now because of the liquid ultra i suppose but yeah i couldn't get those off but i could get most of it off on the ihs and I basically got off all the liquid ultra on the silicon because it doesn't bond to the silicon but it does bond to the IHS which is uh, you know nickel plated copper so if you use it on your cooler it would probably turn out like that too just like it does to my uh, RX 580s on the GPU coolers itself which are copper bare copper but yeah once I clean those off I just you know reapplied the conductor knot back on and I try to do it as best as I could while making it neat by using some scotch tape to you know cover up the areas that I didn't want the liquid metal to touch or go to and once I finished that I just put it back on the IHS and I put it back on my CPU socket and clamp it down and just install the cooler like you would normally do to any CPU and I started stress testing it but this time at 4.8 gigahertz because I also tested it with 4.8 gigahertz on the a previous liquid ultra before I opened it just now and so here are the results and yeah it seems like the temp spread doesn't really improve I still have some kind of a temp spread and I only marginally improved the temperatures but yeah so it doesn't seem like the liquid ultra has degraded at all in my opinion at least from what I see and what I'm observing because as far as I know conductor knot does work better than liquid ultra so this temp improvement might be not because I reapplied it, but it could just really, really be because I replaced the Liquid Ultra with Conductor Knot, not because I made a fresh application. Although I did do a proper way this time, I just used a very small amount now, so it doesn't spill over. But yeah, looks like the temps are just slightly better uh, across the board on all the cores, 
but the temp spread is still there so I would think that it's basically just because of my ship somehow there's one core that's always a little bit hotter but yeah seems like there's a slight improvement but it's probably because I changed to conductonaut which is a better liquid metal uh, compound so yeah I think that the conclusion is that you don't really need to replace your liquid metal even after a few years or, or at least in my case just a year because I don't think it degrades at all it just stays the way it is and yeah I think that pretty much sums it up you don't need to replace your liquid ultra or liquid metal or conductonaut basically it'll stay the same unlike normal thermal paste which will dry out over time and you'll have to replace it over time looks like liquid metal compounds doesn't really dry out or anything you just have to wash out if you use too much it might kind of squish out the sides and might short out something so just keep that in mind but yeah looks like uh, that's it for this video hope you find this interesting and useful and if you do please click the like button and please click subscribe to see more of my future videos thanks for watching